Hi guys, Matt here. Slightly different video for you today. I'm going to talk you through the equipment that I use for developing Kodak motion picture film. It's going to be more like some of my Patreon videos, so more of a no frills video, but let's take a closer look and let's get started. Actually, before we do, here are a few example photos that I've shot over the last probably five years or so. Um, I really enjoyed the colours of Vision 3 films compared to kind of standard C421 colour negative film. It gives, I think, as the I guess as the name suggests, it gives maybe more of a cinematic look, depending on the lighting that you use. And I just like the fact that it gives a different look to say color digital, um, and it gives me an excuse to shoot this film. So these photos are shot on the 500T, 200T, and 50D, uh, all around probably 2014, 2015. I had a break, and then I've kind of got back into it quite recently. Let's get into it. Please excuse all the, the messy background. Um, this is just the easiest way to lay it all out. Okay, first thing is you need some Kodak motion picture film or any motion picture film. I've grabbed some of these out of the fridge. These are various Kodak stocks, uh, 500T, 200T and I think 50D at the bottom. So these are Kodak Vision 3 films. And if you buy them in this form, they're kind of on 400 foot or 1,000 foot rolls. Um, I bought these as what's called short ends, which means they were already part used. And so it was less than the full 400 foot. So 200 foot in this example. That makes it much more cost effective. But you do need to try and find somewhere that sells this. I've had this for quite a few years now. So um, I'm not sure if it's as easy to buy it in this form or whether you have to buy the full 400 foot rolls, which is obviously quite a lot of film. Just as a side note, I did buy 400 foot of the Kodak XX black and white film because I couldn't find any kind of shorter lengths of that film. Okay, so the question you might have is how do I get the film from this into like the Leica or whatever camera you're using, Nikon, whatever. So obviously inside here is a, a big roll of film, like a long piece like this, but much longer. I then use a bolt loader like this there's various brands but this is one of the common ones ap you basically put your film inside here you then put your empty cartridge there the film comes through the machine onto your cartridge you wind it ding 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 so i normally roll off 40 exposures and tape it to an original end with sellotape so there's the original film i then cut it and then sellotape on the new film, kind of like so. Um, there'll be videos on how to do bolt loading online already, so I won't spend too much time on this. This is more of kind of an overview, and then I'll show example pictures. Okay, so next you need some developing equipment. Okay, so what I use personally is I use two three roll um, Patterson developing, developing tanks and then within each one of these you have three reels and then obviously if you're new to film developing one reel goes into each each of the spindles. Uh, please excuse me for how dirty these are they've had hundreds of rolls of film and I have tried to scrub them but they're still very dirty. So that's three reels or you can open them up and have and have two rolls of 120 if you're shooting 120. Obviously for movie film, I'm shooting 35mm. So that means I can do six rolls at a time. I'll just show you how it works. So this will go into your tank. You then put the, the top on. And once the top is on, now I can develop film in daylight. So like in my kitchen sink, you pour all your chemicals in here. Put the lid on, shake it, whatever. Once it's done, take the top off. That's your film done. Now, the bit that's slightly different here is before we get to the film de developing chemicals, we've got a problem because this film has ramjet on. Um, you can't really see it here. I don't know if I've got any examples. There you can. This is normal film. The 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 colour coming out of the out of the cartridge. This is ramjet. So movie film, which is the one we just looked at here, it all has this black 
anti-static ramjet layer on on one side so what you need to do is you need to use chemicals to remove the the black layer before you can develop the film the reason you cannot take movie film to a lab to get developed is because you the black ramjet will kind of trash the, the chemicals of the lab you cannot send movie film to a, your normal film lab you do need to do it yourself which is why i'm making this video okay so what equipment do we need we need the developing tanks we need stopwatch we need the monitor i tend to use manual ones i used to use digital but they eventually they break or the battery goes flat so i tend to just use a simple one and this is one where it clips onto the side of your uh, bottles or jugs i'll show that in a second okay right this is the important bit to remove the rim jet i use bicarbonate of soda or baking soda uh, you can buy this on like ebay in various quantities and i use four heaped teaspoons so I see people do varying amounts of heat. I kind of go big, like four, like that. It's obviously it's all estimated, but I do four generous teaspoons. It's like a cooking video. <laughs> um, four heap teaspoons into so again for the dirty jugs, they're well used. Um, into one litre of tap water, and then I have the tap water at forty degrees centigrade. So I have that on like so. I have four teaspoons worth of baking soda into here. I mix it up and then I'll then tip this into my developing tank. Let it stand for say five minutes and then I'll give it a really good shake. And then I'll let it stand a bit longer. Then I'll tip the content of the tank into the sink. The, the liquid should go from clear to kind of a pinky red colour. You then refill the tank with more water, shake it again, tip it out, and then the liquid should go black and keep doing it until the liquid goes clear. Once the liquid goes clear, you can then develop as normal. Um, I won't dwell on the next bit too much because it's standard film developing, but we can quickly have a look at what I use. Okay, there's various colour film developing kits that you can use. I tend to use this one, which is Tetanel. Colortech C41 and I buy the two and a half litre pack within a box just to kind of give you a visual of what you get you get six bottles of chemicals and they kind of split out as follows you have three developer bottles two Blix bottles or kind of fixer and then one stabiliser so it's really really easy um, it says on the, the front of the bottle so it'll say kind of developer or CD part one Part two, part three. So you mix all those. I think just follow the instructions on the front. It's really, really easy. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Um, then Blix, part one, part two. And then stabiliser. That's just like you would when you do your black and white film, I guess. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the exact instructions because you can just follow the instructions in the book. Or in the um, the guide that comes comes with the, the chemicals, so all that's in one kit. Now I'm making up. These are. If we just go back to the tanks. If we go out, these are one liter tanks. So I'm making up. This is a two and a half liter kit, so it'll do two and a half tanks basically. But I'll make up one liter, and then I'll do tank one, finish tank one, tip it into tank two. So I'll, I'll only make up one liter of solution. And I'll use that for say 15 rolls of um, 35 mil film. Once that's done, I'll discard that chemistry, and then I'll then make up a second lot of one liter, and do that for another 15 rolls of film. So you, in each of these kits, you'll get more than 30 rolls. I'd say maybe 30 to 40, probably closer to 40 rolls of film if you're shooting a lot and if you use the chemicals in a reasonable amount of time um all the details of how long you can keep your chemicals and things are in the booklet but if you kind of store it well you can probably store it for longer um i've talked to some of my patrons and they'd use various smart methods to make the chemistry last longer than it's kind of it would normally last if you just have it in an open bottle like this 
Uh, the reason I've got these tatty plastic bottles is I just wanted to point out that you can do it on kind of with a really cheap kit. So these are all drinks bottles. So all I do is once I've made up my one litre, you can have one litre of developer, one litre of Blix or Fixer, one litre of stabiliser. So you need three, three bottles. So I'd have say three like this. And then once I've finished for the day, I will have developed, for example, six rolls of film. I normally do six rolls from the, the two kits. I'll then finish for the day. I'll put the one, two, three lots of chemistry into one, two, three bottles. I'll then squeeze all the air out, which is why they're all crushed like this. And so the chemistry goes right to the, the very top, so there's no air in. Um, I'll then probably wait a day for the, the reels to be to dry out. And then I'll go again and then I'll do another six rolls. Um, that's that's my method. I find that if you I try to use wet or damp uh, reels, the film doesn't lay properly. So that's why I kind of wait a day before the next lot. So you develop your film, you then hang it to dry. The next step is obviously scanning. So that's my 35mm film holder for my Epson V800. And with this, I can scan 24 negatives at a time, six negatives in each one. And the next step is to do kind of any dust removal in Photoshop, and then that's it, finished. Um, I'll bring up some examples, of screenshots of scans I've done with the last few kind of batches of film in the last few months, just to give you an idea of the results I've been getting from kind of expired uh, Kodak Vision 3 film. So all this film is probably at least, I think, five years old, maybe and it's been kept in the fridge and you can see it's still producing nice colours kind of viewed small screen. If I now bring up some examples where I've developed the film and you can see the, the final results. Um, I find the 500T gives it more of a softer look and the 50D is sharper because it's obviously a finer grain. Um, I've overexposed all of these films by probably one stop so or more so I'll probably shot ISO 50 film at maybe ISO 25 and ISO 500 film at ISO 100 to 200 approximately. Um, it's normally safer I find to overexpose old films and still get kind of nice results. And then I'm not sure if you can tell the difference or not. This is film developed close to the time of buying the film so it should be kind of less expired. So whether this looks fresher to you or less contrasty or more detail uh, you can decide but this is less old film developed in exactly the same way. For those of you that know or don't know, there's also a company called, I think you pronounce it Cybercell 35, uh, I'll put the name on the screen, and those guys offer a film where they sell you the motion picture film, but then they'll also do the developing and scanning in-house. So you use the film, send it back, and then they'll do everything for you and then send you the final images. Um, I have got some of that film which I bought ages ago and it's also <laughs> expired. Um, I'll do a separate video on that because the difference is I'm cross-processing my motion picture film because I'm using C41 chemistry where the film is actually ECN2 film. I guess you've got four choices. You could do C41 home processing like I do, number one. You could try to get some ECN2 chemistry and do ECN2 chemistry at home yourself, option two. You could send it to Cybercell, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. They would develop your film and scan it for you in correct ECN2 chemistry, number three. So you don't have to faff around with any other chemicals, they do it all for you. And number four, you could just buy Cine Steel film, which is the same film stocks as kind of over here that we just looked at. But they've already removed the REM jet, as you probably know, which means you can then develop it in standard C41 chemistry, which then means you can take it to a lab so you don't have to bother with any of this. The main difference is because the REM jet layer has already been removed, you get that really kind of cool halation around the spot points of light, which I think is a strong reason to shoot cine still film. And if you're tempted to buy a movie film, be aware because the REM jet layer is still on, you won't have that cine still kind of look because when the remnant layer is removed, that's what's causing the halation. I hope you found that useful. Sorry for the complete lack of videos. I kind of fell off the YouTube wagon, but um, I'm shooting a lot and I'm developing a lot in the background. So I'll try and come back soon with kind of more of the usual videos.
If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up and feel free to subscribe if you're interested in film cameras and film photography. As always, a massive thank you to my patrons and see you in the next video. Bye.